Hector Villaforte. I live in a community in Humboldt Park. And uh, as a resident of this community, we're tired of all this violence that keeps going on in the community. And no, we ain't getting no response from the aldermen, from the state rep, but they want us to support them on election day or to support who they're supporting to, 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 get it, to get in the office. But they're not out here supporting us to stop this gang violence. And I believe something has to stop to, to stop all this violence. And the other man ain't doing nothing about it, and he don't care because his, his goal is to run one more time and then to get out of office and collect 100% of his pension. But what happens to the victims and the victims' parents and the victims' kids? Nothing. Where's the other man at now? Where's he at now? Where are you at, other man? He's not around. All these people running for office, all these judges are running. They want our support, our the Hispanic support, our community support. But where are they? Some some of these parents can't even bury their kids because they don't got enough money but they all these politicians starting with the judges the aldermen the congressmen they want they want help they want us to go out and vote for them how about coming out and supporting us stop this violence I'm fed up with this violence it's, it's too bad we had already like 10 shootings in the neighborhood one down the street from in front of the school they don't announce that because that school's tied up with the aldermen and all the money they're taking for the violence in that school, and they're not doing nothing. Where, where are the people at now protesting to stop the violence? It's a shame. It's really a shame that that's how this community is coming to. They care more about the candidates that are running for, for judges. We got like 10 judges want to run. They're sending everybody emails and Facebook, judge so-and-so, judge so-and-so. But where are they at? Where are these judges at? They want to get in office to convict our people but when they're not out here supporting us to stop this violence, I'm fed up with this. Thank you, and I hope this message goes viral. Uh, say your name, spell it, and then just tell us what happened. Chris, C R H C H R I S, and last name is Green, G R E E N. I just witnessed the shooting last night. Uh, came outside after I heard the shots. It was like nine rounds that went off. So tell us, what, what, what happened last night? What, what was the first thing that caught your attention last night on Division Street over here, 2500 uh, block? Just hearing the gunshots. You heard the gunshots? Yeah, I heard like six gunshots. It sounded like they were from like a semi-automatic rifle. And uh, after that, there's a pause and then four more shots. And then we came outside and we heard a car skirt off. We saw another car crashed into a tree up there. Okay, so I, how do you feel living in the 26th Ward and seeing the GS moved in? So. It's pretty crazy, man. I'm, where I'm from, I've never seen anything like this, to be honest with you. Uh, it's pretty new to me. I've been around, you know, low-income areas. I've been around violence before, but never like this. This is the second shooting that's happened this week. So you did experience another shooting this week? Yeah, it was a domestic. Uh, a guy let off a couple shots into the air uh, during a domestic disturbance with his either girlfriend or wife. Now the shooting you seen, where was that? It was literally the same exact location as this one last night. The one right here in the corner of the division? Yeah, between, between that stoplight up there on uh, Rockwell and my front door. Okay. All same right. exact location as yesterday. All right, and thank you very much for your interview. Yep. Have a good day. You too. All right, be safe. You too.
7 at 7.20 p.m. My cousin got shot and killed. And um, this community is going downhill in the 26th Ward. Rahm Emanuel don't care. And um, Roberto Maldonado, nobody has came out here to look and see if uh, my family is okay. Because the person that got murdered was uh, Manuel Jr. And he was my cousin. And he attended Clemente High School. He was going to graduate this year. And nobody has been taking care of our community. And it's turning bad and bad. And uh, like two weeks ago, um, there was a robbery down by West Park Academy right in front of the school. And nobody's coming over here. Nobody has reached out to my family trying to help. And these uh, murders are going unsolved. So we need to help uh, our aldermen and uh, mayor. And nobody's out here helping. All right, let me ask you a question now. So, your your little cousin was murdered here, in this spot right here, near us in the 26th ward. No one has reached out to you. Has anybody contacted you or anything? No, no one has contacted my uncle or anybody. All right. So now, as far as the shootings, have there been a lot of shootings in this area? Is this a dangerous area? Lately, it's, it's been really dangerous, and it's turning into a war zone, and nobody's doing anything. That's my cousin right there, too, walking. So another cousin. cousin? Yeah. Everybody lives in the community. You think he may want to say something on the side? Uh, ask him. I don't, I don't know. Okay. But listen, so I want to ask you this question. Though. Do you believe that Alderman... Do, how do you rate Alderman Ma Roberto Maldonado and Mayor Ram Emanuel as far as the violence and about caring and trying to do something in this area, especially the 26th Ward, Humble Park? These, none of them are helping or doing anything to stop this violence, and it's getting out of hand. I'm even considering moving out. Now, you're, you've, you've been hearing that there's going to be an organization that uh, the people, the residents of Humble Park are organizing, correct? Yeah. Right, so they got they're calling it the Humble Park Residents Political Action Committee. So this is basically so that the residents of Humble Park, whether you vote or not, could take power, and the voters would choose who they want in office who's effective. Do you agree with that? Yes, I agree with that. Would you would you take a stand with that? Yes, That's I true. will. I will stand with that. All right, thank you. My name is Linda Capshaw, Princess Capshaw's mother, and I would love to see my daughter working. And me, myself, I need help along the way as well. I'm trying to move from this apartment to a decent place. But right now, it's pretty hard on me because I have to take care of Princess needs first. And I, it'd be a, one if you are giving my daughter that job. That would help me out a whole lot and also help her too. And she would appreciate it. I thank you so much. And I appreciate it. Y'all have a wonderful time. Okay. Ms. Capshaw. Uh, as far as, okay, so Princess is 16 years old, right? Right. So I believe she can get a job working with your signature, and that's what you intend to do, sign for her, right? Yes. Okay. Now, as far as Princess right now, what does she need for school? She needs a lot of things for school. She needs clothes also? She also needs clothes as well. Okay. All right, then. So this is for uh, Black Lives Matter, Women of Faith, and uh, we're in the West Side, so we're here with Princess' mom, and I'm gonna. this is a take, and I'm going to send it to you guys. All right? Tell me about this place right here. This, uh, this is ceiling. Rats come out of the ceiling. Oh, sorry. So there's rats coming out of those ceilings. Yeah. And what else? Are they in the walls? Yeah, they are in the walls. I need. But did he minimize the crime? No. If he would have hired 500 cops and then. $43 million he would have spent it on these guys that come out of jail mm -hmm. on trade school. These guys could have cleaned their life up and, ha and have a beautiful life. But the first thing they come out of jail, they ain't got nothing. And what happens? They go back to jail right. or get killed. Exactly. And, you know, we trying to avoid all or this kill problem else. or kill somebody else. Yeah. And that's the reason... We want change in this light and this city. And uh, I think with the help of Mrs. Uh, Ruff. Ruff, we could do a lot of changes here in Chicago. And I'm glad that we got to meet and and I'm willing to work with them and see we could do something for our use right now. Okay, so now tell me, give us a, a brief rundown on what you've been doing so far in the program and as far as uh, uh, saving lives and stuff, because you've been saving lives, go ahead. 
Well, we got 13 kids out of the streets. Um, what I do, I, I pay for their their, uh, their dues to go to the gym and work out. Uh, I help them financially. I do a lot of things. I invest money and I invest my time. I live in the suburb and I come all the way to, to, from the suburb and I go into the streets and talk to the kids and try to change their life and try to get them a job. Uh, we got one of the best guys, politicians here in Chicago, like Jesse White. He is the guy that always got something new for the kids, always helping kids. And uh, guys like that, that's the, pe that's the people that we are looking for and that's the people that we do need in Chicago. People like Jesse White, that's always helping kids from the streets getting them into the sports, into basketball, baseball, uh, all kind of sports. So now Jesse White is, Jesse White is actually uh, su supporting you personally and another group, correct? Where are right. those groups? And tell us also, you need more support, correct? Tell well, us about yeah, that. We are we looking for support you know, from different organizations because just one little organization or one, uh, uh, a couple fighters can do it every day. But we could do as much as that we that we could do to help these kids. But it's you know it's hard uh, for one, uh, five guys, six guys doing it themselves. Okay. So then, uh, what that's it. Hello, my name is Louis Mateo. I was a uh, I was raised here in the Humboldt Park area, and uh, from being raised here. My mother took us out of the neighborhood and we got to be good citizens to help other kids like us and uh, that's how I started my boxing career when I was seven years old and from there I won the Golden Glove and I was nationwide champion as an amateur and then I went professional and I also become champion and also uh, I was inducted in the Boxing Hall of Fame here in Chicago with Muhammad Ali and um, also uh, we had all the champions of the world supporting us and a lot of from New York also supporting us on the Boxing Hall of Fame of all the fighters and all the greatest boxers of all time like Evander Holyfield and uh, we'll, you know, we're looking for support right now I'm glad that I met uh, Miss Ruff. Ruff, and she's from the um, Black Lives Matter Black Life. Women of Faith, along with uh, uh, LaShawn Latrice, co-founder. And that's what we're doing right now, and uh, we get, we're getting together to do something for the youths here yes. in Chicago, because our system is not, they're not helping the new system that we got now, but now with these people I think we could do a lot for the youth right now in Chicago and we need a new breed of leadership exactly people that's going to uh, care about the black and brown community that's right not just the rich because that's what we've been seeing for the last almost eight years now and so we definitely going to get rid of uh, Rahm Emanuel and I hope you are listening you will not be our mayor that so, is right. So you might as well get ready, start packing, because you will not be the mayor of Chicago. You have not done anything in Chicago. We've had over 500 uh, of our young people that have been killed. I mean, over 500, and the year is not out. So we're saying, Rahm Emanuel, it's time for you to go. Now, I understand that you said that you're hiring a thousand more cops. For what? Why did you hire a thousand cops a couple of months ago? And then you're talking about uh, hiring a thousand more for what? Can I say something for a Taxpayers second? Taxpayers money. Uh, you know, he hired a thousand cops. Okay, let, let's say some. He spent 87.